Thursday, December 27th, 2018. I am in Bernie, Texas, which is northwest of San Antonio, out by the uh, river here. Some people call it, I guess, the uh, duck pond, but uh, they had a lot of rain here overnight, so it's a little bit muddy out there. But you can see, I like to be outside when it's uh, warm temperatures. It's like in the 60s today. And so I am outside and looking to have a good time and have some fun here. And uh, that's what I like to do, is I like to enjoy myself and enjoying means uh, to you know, get outside. I know I've always said I'm a kid from a cornfield and I enjoy being outside. I did a lot of work outside when I was uh, growing up. In fact, I remember before my dad had passed away, he uh, died of a heart attack at, uh, I'm trying to think, I think he was like 67 or something like that. Uh, but I used to cut wood with him. He used to go out in the farm and cut wood every uh, fall and we'd watch a Purdue football game and stuff. So I enjoy being outside and uh, we had a creek, we had a pond, we had deer, we had cattle, pigs, uh, 160 acres. So, so anyways, um, welcome everyone. Uh, it's a little bit breezy outside today. Normally I would not be able to be outside because some of the wind gusts are, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 mile an hour, but my uh, camera is behind a tree, so that should hopefully muffle any wind noisage today so that you can hear. So um, welcome everybody. Welcome Suzanne from California. Welcome Penny. Uh, welcome, I think I saw Nicole. Um, I'm trying to think who else I saw pop on there. So anyway, hopefully you guys are enjoying the time between uh, Christmas and New Year's. Hello, Jeff's wife. I uh, can't remember your name, um, Jeff's wife, but I know that uh, you are a woman and not a man. Um, hello, uh, Michelle from Cleveland. Welcome. So I have some uh, positive, uh, fun news to uh, kick off the day with. Um, had a woman, I guess I'll say her first name, Lisa, um, who uh, lives in the eastern half of the United States that contacted the folks at Amazon for uh, getting a uh, new version of my Restored to Freedom book. Yeah, Susan, that's what I thought it was. I thought it was Susan. Uh, sorry about not remembering your name, Susan. So, and hello, Rebecca. And so anyway, she calls Amazon because she wants the most current version of Restored to Freedom. You know, and they have like a, apparently an inventory of the older versions they're trying to give up. They said that those books that sell a lot, they end up having like an inventory so they can just get them off the shelf and, st and ship them out really fast. So anyway, she uh, had ordered and got an older version, wanted the newer version. So she actually called and talked to a live person from Amazon. And after she explained, you know, her desire for the newest version, the Amazon employee asked what the book was about. And so she explained what the book was about. And then the Amazon employee said, huh, that sounds like a book that me and my husband would be interested in. You know, in fact, we are looking to, you know, get into, uh, you know, a ministry and what you're describing sounds like that might be something the Lord would be taking us into. So the Amazon employee actually said that she was going to buy Restore to Freedom and read it. And then um, if the Lord leads, you know, to uh, maybe uh, get more involved with the Restore to Freedom ministry. So how cool is that? So any of you um, maybe want to give calls to Amazon today and uh, give them some positive, uh, you know, um, thoughts on uh, the, the jobs that they're doing there and encouraging them, that would be awesome and great. You know, I love the way that God works. You know, that is, um, it, that is so cool, you know, because, um, you know, I've had a lot of uh, you know, good success, obviously, with Amazon printing up the books and we're seeing a lot of people... Sorry about that, somebody from Indianapolis trying to call in. And so anyways, um, good stuff and uh, the Lord is on the move and he is uh, wanting to work with you know all of us obviously, to, to be honest. I know that when I, before I started doing this ministry, oftentimes I'd have, uh, I don't know, a fear probably 
of having conversations with people, you know, as openly as I do now, but because of what I've gone through and what I've endured and the uh, amount of, you know, miraculous things I've seen, I can't keep myself quiet. I have to share. I'm so excited, you know. So, um, whenever I um, end up um, getting my hair cut, I think I've talked to you guys about this, like at Sport Clips, you know, invariably they ask you what you do for a living, what do you do, and so forth. And so it always leads to, well, I used to sell software to banks, so I try to approach it as a normal thing versus saying, uh, I deliver people from demons. You can't do that. That'll freak people out. So you have to be wise. <laughs> so you basically say, yeah, I used to sell software to banks. Oh, really? You know, and then I went through some family things, and you can describe some of the pain and so forth. You can be honest. People like to hear testimonies, you know, and they share their life, you know, with them. And then after you do that, then you can open it up to talk about the Lord and talk about life changes. And because everybody has gone through lives of various challenges and coping with uh, problems and issues and pains in their life, and people like to share that stuff. So. So anyway, um, I think it's kind of cool, you know, that uh, the Amazon employee is uh, buying Restored to Freedom and is looking at coming on with Restored to Freedom and the ministry. So how cool is that? Only God could do that. So anyway, so it's a beautiful day here in uh, Bernie, Texas, which is northwest of San Antonio. I had to come outside even though it's a little bit breezy, but I got my camera stuck behind a tree here. So that hopefully keeps it a little uh, quieter for you. So today, uh, the topic is how to walk in peace 24-7. You know, what goes along with that is basically how to enjoy your life, how to have fun, you know, stop complaining about stuff that we're going through. You know, we can speak negative. And in fact, I remember when I was, uh, just got married to my, my second wife and we were going through these mentoring sessions. They weren't counseling sessions, they were mentoring, basically spiritual mentoring. And the guy that was uh, mentoring us said, you know, he didn't want to hear anything negative from our mouths. So of course the Lord wouldn't let me share anything that I was going through that which was tumultuous throughout the six years. So I couldn't tell anything. All, all I, you know, everything was great. You know, everything was, was perfect, you know, and, and I was really wanting to just listen to him because he could get a word from the Lord that was really amazing and accurate on, you know, spot on. But yet I was learning spiritually from him and that was starting to change my life. So I didn't want to share anything of the negative stuff I was going through. You know, nobody really wants to hear a lot of negative stuff. I understand that. I get that, you know. You know, and I, I've done a lot of individual counseling sessions. I normally don't want to hear what the person's been through because I know it's not been good. That's why I always start off with a word from the Lord because the Lord will validate and confirm all the stuff that's gone on in the past. So, hello, uh, Tina Marie from up the road in College Station. Restored to freedom. Fist bump. Yay. She's been doing an amazing, awesome job for uh, RTF as the growth is continuing to uh, happen every single week. We're getting more and more people certified with Restored to Freedom so that we can get more deliverances done. So she's been doing an amazing, awesome, awesome uh, job as my vice president. So so anyways, um, so what I would normally do is be, when I do a session with somebody is I don't want to hear you know 45 minutes of all the horrible stuff they've gone through because we already know that. You know, that doesn't get them on the other side to where they're going to have peace. So just like if I was in front of Jesus, I'd shut my mouth and listen to Jesus talk because he has the solution and the answer. You know, I don't want to be, you know, he knows I've gone through stuff. Hello, why would I waste time and belabor that? So, but everybody likes to share, I you know, the pain they've gone through because some of us have gone through extreme stuff, you know, to us. And maybe it's not as extreme as somebody else down the road. So anyways, um... It's important, obviously, to, when you're trying to get into peace, is to listen, you know, to people who have gone through a lot of stuff, but have walked through it and are on the other side now and are having peace in their lives, no matter what they're going through. You know, again, we're always going to have to have more enemy crap that comes against us, normally through other people that are coming against us. They could be lying about us. They could be trying to uh, crash ministries or crash your life or or pray that your uh, marriage you know breaks up or whatever you know and you have a happy marriage at the time you know so um, so anyways today the Lord told me to focus on this scripture second Timothy 2 20 through 26 you now normally oftentimes I talk about 23 and 24 which is the guy that mentored me 
you know, I basically, he, he drilled that into my brain. You know, a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, must not strive, but be gentle in all their ways. So I talk about that a lot. You know, if you are a true Christian, a true servant of, servant of the Lord, you, you better not be striving. You better not be arguing. You better not be fighting. That's ridiculous. That is not who a true Christian is. And that's how you can kind of spot a person who is not a true godly follower of Christ. You know, they could be in the church. They could be having their own ministry. And all they do is try to look for the negative in everybody and point out, you know, and condemn people and all this crap. You know, God doesn't uh, care who you've been in the past. Now look at Paul. Paul did some bad things, you know. Look at even David in his life. But what God cares about is what's the state of your heart today, right now. You know, if, if there are things that you have like pride that's still in your life, pride will block you from walking in peace. Pride, pride will block you from seeing things in your own, like the plank in your own eye. And you try and point out all these uh, specks in everybody else's eyes. Well, that's ridiculous, you know. It's who are you today? You know, do you have a, a heart for people? You know, it doesn't mean that we're all going to be walking, obviously, you know, in perfection. We're not going to be perfect until we, you know, either go to heaven, you know, or, you know, Christ comes back. So we have to recognize that. But it's looking at yourself today and humbling yourself and saying, okay, Lord, is there anything in me that I need to change? Is there anything in me in my life that uh, needs to go away? Please show me and then be humble enough to receive it from what the Lord is wanting to reveal to you. There's too many people that are prideful and arrogant. You know, they have the spirits of Jezebel, Leviathan, that would be considered narcissist, that they will never even admit that they have anything wrong in their life. And they point out the, you know, the uh, specks in other people's lives and not looking at the plank of their own in their own eyes. So anyway, 2 Timothy 2, 20 through 26 says, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Now, I'm not sure how many people have ever you know, read that before. Again, that's 2 Timothy 2, 20 through, I believe it's 20... Two. But again, it says, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor, some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, from the dishonorable items, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, which is Jesus, prepared for every good work. Then it goes on to say, flee also youthful lusts but pursue righteousness. And we talked about yesterday, lawlessness. You know, lawlessness is sin. You know, we're supposed to pursue righteousness, which is being pure and spotless in every way. So flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace, with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. How beautiful is that? That's how we should all be. Now, how many of us are? that way how many of us walk in that way you know if if you make a mistake then go to the person and apologize for it don't lie about a person and then lie worse about them you know that is not what a godly person is you know that is not what a Christian is if you end up yelling at somebody berating them you know being physical with them recognize it own up to it apologize for it make it right you know, that's what the Lord expects from us, you know, out of a pure heart. It's those that abuse someone and then they completely lie about the person and blame them for everything. You know, that just irks, irks me. <laughs> and I've seen it happen all the time, over and over again, with people that struggle with the spirit of Jezebel and Leviathan. They can't see it in themselves. And then they come up with these lavish stories of lies to try to make people feel sorry for them and like none of it ever happened, or like a percentage of it does, you know, 10% or something. And this is like, really, people, be honest. Okay, so then, goes forth and says, if I'm gonna drink a water, it's a little bit dry. Um, all right, 
but avoid foolish and ignorant disputes. You know, how many of us get drawn into these stupid arguments, you know? <laughs> and that's why I talk about this all the time. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God, perhaps, will grant them repentance. That's a huge mouthful right there. You know, we need to memorize that. Servant of the Lord must not quarrel, must not strive. I will not strive with anybody. It is so awkward and foreign when someone comes to me and tries to get into strife. You know, sometimes it'll come on Facebook when someone will try to put a comment out there that I know where they're going with it. You know, and I won't fall for that. You know, I may respond in a loving way and then if they come back and try to cause more strife, then I'll say, nope, done, I'm not gonna do that. A servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle in all their ways. So again, avoid foolish and ignorant disputes. I know somebody was on here posted yesterday that they, uh, at Christmas, had a person that tried to provoke them with politics, some political thing. Like they were, the person was like, I don't know, coming against Trump or something. And so the, the, the uh, person who's gone through and you know studied with restorative freedom said, I didn't take the bait. I didn't go into the strife with him, you know? And the person didn't know what to do. <laughs> They're like, what, wait a minute. You're supposed to get angry with me. And they wouldn't do it. So it's really hard to get into an argument with somebody that doesn't participate, you know? How many times do uh, you get blasted by somebody and then you respond back? Well, then you're responding back to a demon at that point because only demons want to get you into arguments and striving and fighting and uh, all that crap. So again, I'm gonna read this again. Avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. And that's important, doing it in a humble way. You know, you could be, you know, if a person's prideful to you, it's very hard to not want to be prideful back, you know, especially if they're wrong and you know that you're right. You know, you want to slam them back, you know, verbally and get them, you know. You know, I had a lot of practice with this. I know with uh, uh, the last, uh, well, from 2009 to 2015, I had a lot of practice where I was around people who thought they know it, knew it all. You know, and there were a lot of times they didn't. And so I had to bite my tongue in a lot of cases because otherwise I would be participating and causing more strife and fighting and arguing. You know, oftentimes, you know, the enemy wants to speak to you to get you to stand up for what is truth to get them to look humiliated. And the Lord's like, don't do that. You know, it's hard sometimes because they're pushing your buttons, especially if you're married to somebody. They'll push your buttons, push your buttons, and they know it. You know, and uh, oftentimes if you do reply back, you'll become a person that you're not normally. You'll get angry. I want to roar back to them. The Lord's like, stop it. Servant of the Lord must not quarrel. You know, must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. So if you can do it in a humble way, you know, be like Jesus. I know it's not easy sometimes, because especially if you're in marriage to someone, they'll. It's almost like, you know, and I, I said this several times with my second wife, it felt like Satan himself was speaking through her. I'm like, why is she saying these things? They hurt me so badly. They're so awful, you know, and everything in me just wanted to say, stop it. I think I think I said it once to her, stop it. And then she got really mad at that point. You know, like, how dare you come against me? And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, so it was pretty, gave me a lot of practice at biting my tongue and biting my tongue and biting my tongue. And there's times like just, you know, after 20 minutes of taking a verbal berating, I finally stood up and, you know, and just either walked out of the room, you know, but I got a lot of practice at that. You know, I'm like, gosh, Lord, this is incredible. The amount of practice that you're giving me to like not respond back to someone that's really pulling my chain and provoking and provoking and provoking. So, you know, a lot of you probably go through this, you know, and again, I, and I get it. If you're in marriage to someone, if you're in, if you're wed to someone, you know, or even engaged to someone, it can be really hard because it's like, oh my gosh, Lord, here we go again on the crazy train <laughs> where we've been around that block a zillion times and you feel like you're going crazy and it makes you sick to your stomach and you're like, ah, I don't want this anymore. 
God export me up to heaven. You know, now you can think about you know Elijah when he defeated you know the the all the, the Baal prophets you know and killed them all, and then one word from Jezebel and he goes right into a cave and like Lord kill me. He didn't want to take it, you know. All right, so let's continue. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance. So in a lot of cases, these people, they need to repent. You know, they need to for, ask for forgiveness. You know, a lot of them that have a strong Jezebel that'd be considered a narcissist, you're like, well, that'll never happen. You know, they're too prideful. They think all the problem is me. I'm like, yep, I know, been there, done that. I get it. <laughs> so, but that's what it takes. You know, and some people, they, they, they may have to go through a lot of broken relationships where nobody, you know, everybody, you know, said, man, I, you know, I love you, but I don't like you very much and I can't live with you after maybe a year or two or five or 10, you know, and then that person at the end of their life has no friends because nobody wants to listen to their junk that comes out of their mouth and their uh, pride and all that condemnation and stuff. So, so they have to humble themselves and they have to repent to the Lord, you know, and, and you know it, you know, when a person gets delivered, say from this Jezebel spirit, Leviathan spirit, from being a narcissist, you'll know it because they will be so humble, they'll be so different than what they were before. You'll actually, I mean, it, it's, it's amazing. There's so many people that are in relationships with those types of people and they have such a love for them. And yet all they do is get hurt and hit and hurt and hit, you know, verbally. I'm not saying physically, they can be hurt, hurt physically and or sexually, you know, and it's like the, the people that are loving them have such a, an extreme love, an agape love, to even be in the relationship with them, you know, could be weeks later, months later, years later, you know, and you're just like wanting to just jump off the cliff and say, man, God, I can't deal with this anymore. You know, it's crazy. So anyway, it says, if God perhaps will grant them repentance. So they have to really humble themselves so that they may know the truth. That's what it comes down to is the truth. You know, how many people that have Jezebel and narcissists, they can't handle the truth. Who said that? Jack Nicholson, I think, in one of the movies. You can't handle the truth. It's my best Jack Nicholson uh, <laughs> imitation. Uh, anyway, he's like a huge Lakers fan, by the way, if you didn't know that. One flew over the cuckoo's nest, didn't he? Wasn't he in that movie too? Anyway, it's like, yeah, if they can't handle the truth, they're not gonna get delivered. And that's what I'm seeing, obviously, in deliverance. If a person's not going to be honest in a session, which nine times out of ten, those that are very strong, Jezebel and Leviathan, narcissists, they're not going to be honest. They're going to tell you that, that their spouse was the bad one and they're going to describe all this behavior that oftentimes they did, did themselves to the person. You know, we see that a lot. You know, a person uh, maybe even do like a protective order against you and they can't come up with anything. So then they put on there what they did to you. And then they lie and say that you did it to them. And you're like, what? You're crazy. <laughs> it's like, so anyway, they have to humble themselves. They have to repent before God. Now that's the only way they're gonna get into heaven. You know, so many people that are out there looking good in front of the church that are prideful, that are arrogant, and the Lord knows their hearts and their minds. And if they were to die, they're not gonna get into heaven. They're very arrogant. They have to humble themselves before the Lord and repent. If God will, you know, will uh, grant them that repentance. Again, we're reading 2 Timothy 2, 20 through 26 for everybody. So anyway, so that they may know the truth. I'll, I'll read the whole thing again. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil. So that right there says it all too. They don't have their senses, they're crazy. They're on the crazy train. They think they're in a different reality, you know, and they could really believe it. They could really believe that you were like, I don't know, that you physically abused them. And they'd be telling everybody on, on the street and everybody at church that you did that and you didn't. You're like, what the heck? I didn't, and he had got all these mean stares from people at church. You know, more, more, more often than not, they'll lie about you verbally and said that you were, I don't know, whatever. You were, you were what they were, you know? 
they'll blame you, they'll call you Jezebel. <laughs> and they're the ones that have it. And it's just like, oh my gosh, how can you not see this? Ah. So, anyway, they're not in the right senses. They're not in the right frame of mind. And oftentimes they believe their narrative. They believe their lies is truth. And then you're like, oh my gosh, they really believe this. Now what do I do? Well, in some cases you may have to separate from them. You may have to give them to God and let him deal with them, even though you love them, because otherwise it's gonna hurt you even worse to be around them. You know, I have a lot of people that have moms and dads that have the Jezebel spirit, and they love them, and they have such struggles because they desperately want unconditional love, and they can't get it. So I tell them the best thing that they can do is to stay away from them and love them from afar. And I'll send them a text, love ya. And then they get blasted with five texts back saying, you are this worth, worthless piece of blank and all this stuff. And you're like, oh my gosh, they're still taking out all their pain from their mom and dad on me. And I didn't do anything. And that's how it's a generational curse. It goes from one generation to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. So they got to humble themselves. And so sometimes you have to separate and give them to the Lord. Let the Lord humble them. Hey, the hair that I have is like blowing in the wind. All we are is dust in the wind. Remember that song? I wonder where that siren went off. It's not 12 noon yet central. I know they had like tornado watches here last night. That was interesting. Not normally uh, being from Indiana do we have tornado watches in the uh, month of late December. So, um, but they had some storms that came through and uh, rained a lot in South Texas. But today, the rain is gone and all things are clear. Um, anyway, let's go on. Uh, so go, again, this is a long sentence. This is one of the longer sentences in the Bible, I believe. Again, 2 Timothy 2, 20 through 26, but I'm reading like the last uh, verse here, 26. It says, and a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient in, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth, and that they may come to their senses, and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Boom. Boom. Bam. That, people should memorize that. You know, and people should teach that. Pastors should teach that. How many pastors have you heard preach a message on that? You know, they should be able to understand that. That's not talking about Leviathan in Job 41. I get it while pastors don't talk about that because they don't understand and have a clue about Leviathan. Although some of them are now learning more about it, which is great. But I'm thinking, my gosh, if I'm a pastor, I'd be talking about that, you know, at least once a month. Because how many people... They're liar. They're liars. You know, they have those spirits, Jezebel Leviathan, and they're making things up. You know, I have a lot of, I know a lot of good men, you know, a few good men, but I know a lot of good men who have been Jezebel by their wives. You know, very calm, meek men, loving, and then their wives go off on them verbally, trying to destroy them, lie about them, hurt their reputation. And the same thing, of course, happens to women when you have guys that are all this, all this, debonair, all think that they're just the greatest thing since sliced bread, and they're all prideful, and then they lie about their good wives, you know. I have a heart for people that get hurt. I have a heart for people that uh, are victims. I have a heart for people who have been victimized, and then they end up having people that have the spirits of Jezebel that victimize them again. So again, it's hard to be at peace when you're in that environment that's toxic. And so I'm gonna talk a little bit about, there's two different, um, ways that we can lose our peace. There is external and then there is internal. So the enemy can hit you externally through other people who are affected by demons, who are coming after you, who are lying about you, who are trying to control you, manipulate you, make you do what they want, all this junk. And then there's internal ways that the enemy can hit you. You know, the internal ways you know, you have control over. The Lord's given you the authority, but you have to walk it out. You have to know it. You have to come out of agreement with the enemy. And of course, that voice that's familiar to you your whole life when you're growing up as a little girl or a little boy, 
and you get hurt by your father or mother, you get rejected by your dad or your mom, you have a stepdad or a stepmom, you get hurt by people. That's how the enemy comes in and hurts a child. You could have been showed a playboy in school and then have a sexual addiction later on as a guy. You could uh, have a myriad of ways sexually. You get touched inappropriately, you know, as a girl. Some boy at school touches you, you know, and it hurts you, you know, and you end up having the enemy has a legal right then to start to coming in to remind you of things you've gone through. We talked about legion. Legion takes you back to the past, traumas over and over and over again. And then you relive it and you're stuck in the past. And you have to truly, truly, truly forgive people that have hurt you. So the internal ways that the enemy comes against you is through your thoughts. Take every thought captive, it says in 2 Timothy, or 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We're supposed to take every thought captive. But how do you do that if you can't discern what thoughts are from the enemy? What thoughts are from you? What thoughts are from the Lord? You know, I didn't even have a clue about this stuff being real. A lot of us that are watching hadn't had a clue because the church didn't teach it to us. You know, there are some that do, you know, some that did, but very few, you know. And so when we don't pay attention to what thought just came into us, again, it's not like the enemy's going to say, hey, hello, I'm a demon. Um, guess what? You're... Your wife is just like your mom and you can't trust her. You need to control her and tell her what to do. You know, oh, that's a thought from the enemy, but you're not gonna know it because the enemy is not gonna tell you, hey, I'm a demon, I'm planting this thought here. Now I want you to take it and run with it because this is the truth, baby. This is the truth when it's not. You have to take every thought captive. So you think about the thought that you have. When you uh, start to have the thought that comes in, and it starts to go into a negative direction, then stop it in mid-sentence. Stop the enemy. You know, I, I got practice in doing this from 2009 to 2015. Got a lot of practice because the enemy was coming against my spouse and then was hitting me with, with actions and stuff that wasn't fun. But even then thereafter, if I was by myself, I'd have a thought that Emmy would try to come in. You need to divorce her. You need to leave her, blah, blah, blah. She is horrible. Of course, a lot of what was being said to me was true. You know, know me 90% of what the enemy is going to share is truth. But as soon as it goes into a negative direction, it's like, wait a minute. Um, that seems like the enemy thought coming in. Then you stop it. You shut it down mid-sentence. And how do you do that? Well, as soon as I recognized it, like if the enemy was saying, hey, um, you know what, Nelson? You know, all this money that you're spending on your stepchildren, you know, you're going to go into a bunch of debt and you're never going to get out of it. Well, as soon as I started hearing the thought saying, well, you know what? You know, all the money that you're spending, oh, wait, I stopped it. And then I redirected my thought on something true, something noble, something just, something lovely, something that uh, was not from the enemy. If I let him keep speaking a whole sentence to me, then I'm not going to be at peace. I'm going to take that thought and run with it and say, yeah, you're right. I'm not going to give any more money to my stepchildren. I've given them 50,000. That's enough. I'm going to cut them off. I'm going to, I'm going to speak my mind. Now, before you know it, you're in strife, you know, and then you go through a divorce and then your stepchildren don't want anything to do with you anymore. They hate you. You know, in my case, my stepson loves me, still texts me. We hang out whenever I'm at home, which is hardly ever so, but he knows I'm the real deal. I'm a good guy. You know, it doesn't mean that I might make a mistake here and there. That's humans, but um, we uh, need to take all the thoughts captive. And I wish every pastor would speak a, a sermon once every two months about taking the thoughts captive, recognizing and discerning those thoughts, and then shutting it down. Shutting it down like a clown. Why? Because that's what the enemy is. He uses the same thing over and over. It's a familiar voice. You've heard that all your life, and it becomes familiar to you. You think it's got your back. You think it's going to protect you, and it doesn't. It makes things worse whenever you listen to the enemy. You know, you're going to hear thoughts that will condemn you. That's from the enemy. Don't listen to it. You know, you're going to go through things. People are going to do things to you to hurt you externally. You know, oftentimes the only way to control your peace with people externally is to stay away from them. I understand when it's hard when you're married to somebody. You know, there was times at night I had to sleep in a separate bedroom or I'd sleep in my car. You know, or I'd sleep in the mulch down the street because I wanted to have peace, you know. So there you have to do what you have to do. If the Lord tells you to stay in that marriage, you stay in it until the Lord says it's time to go, time to separate. You listen to the Lord's voice. 
you know. Um, but again, never listen to the thoughts of the enemy. That's like the number one thing. As soon as you, you discern it, you get your thought on something else. Think about something that you enjoy doing. Like, huh, I want to go hiking. You know, I want to go swimming. I want to go for a run. I want to work out, you know, because um, that's what I'm thinking. Or I want to go eat um, um, uh, uh, brisket. I want to go eat a salada and have some salad change of pace but think of something that's different get your thoughts back aligned with you know away from the enemy on things that are either of the Lord or just your own thoughts you know get your thoughts back take your thoughts back and then the other thing is you have to pay attention to is once you get a thought from the enemy the next thing he wants you to do is to speak it out to give it more life and y'all you know we all know that's how this earth came into existence God spoke it out you know, 90% of the healings that Jesus did, he spoke, you know, he spoke it with the authority of Christ. You know, when I pray for some people, you know, for healing, I pray for deliverance, we speak it out, we take authority, we command that stuff to go in Jesus' name. So the last thing you want to do is to speak it out. You know, again, I, you know, had experience with that as well. When you have a person that's getting hit all the time from the enemy and they won't admit it, they're going to speak words out. They're going to speak death over you. And that can make you sick. Literally, it could be a slow death that you end up having over time. And it gets worse, and it gets worse, and it gets worse, and it gets worse. So what do you do when you're in, you know, in the vicinity of someone that's speaking words out to hurt you? And you're losing your peace. Well, you walk away. You walk away. The guy that mentored me said, you know what, Nelson, you need to get out of Dodge. Whenever your spouse is getting hit by the enemy, do not engage with the enemy. Do not engage because then you're dealing with a, a demon within the spouse who they'll go on all night, you know, all day, all night. And it's just like, where is you out? You know, I will not participate in that. Thank you very much. I will say, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to strive. No, not today. Not ever. Not going to happen. You know, I love you, but I'm not going to strive. So you have to pay attention to that. You know, again, all the time you can get hit externally by people that will try to strive with you. And it's like I can I can discern it so clearly now. It's like it's like as soon as a person you know says something that is strifeful with a tone or something with anger, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, if I respond back right now, I know what's going to happen, and it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> it's going to be bad. So the best thing to do is say, oh, I'm sorry, I need to go, or sorry, I need to go to the bathroom. Sorry, um, I need to make a phone call right now. Something, anything to get away from that strife. Get out of Dodge. Now the other thing that the enemy will try to do to steal your peace is to cause you to worry. Get into fear. I always say fear is false evidence appearing real. How many times do we have that? Where people will have thoughts coming in from the enemy and you're like, well, well, but this thing could happen. That thing could happen. That bad thing could happen. This bad thing could happen. Well, it's the enemy. Stop him, shut him down immediately. Because you can go on all day with the what ifs. What if this could happen? What if that could happen? Da, 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 da. You know, I don't do that. Not anymore, I used to. And that's how the enemy hits a lot of us and steals our peace, is gets you to worry. Don't get into worry, don't, don't go to worry town. Stay away from worry town. Stay in, uh, I don't know, Positiveville. You know, speak life and take those thoughts captive again. Don't get into the what ifs. And of course, people that do strive, and that's what their mode of operandi is all the time, striving, striving, fighting, arguing, eventually what you'll learn to do is to walk away and stay away from them. That's why I say a lot of people that have, you know, the stronger spirits of Jezebel, Leviathan, narcissists, they don't have many friends as they get older. They don't have, you know, they may have a one friend that they can, I don't know, beat up on all the time and that person just is such an Ahab they take it and take it and take it and take it but I believe there's a song in the 80s that says we're not gonna take it no we ain't gonna take it we ain't gonna take it anymore something like that who sings that uh, quiet riot or something <laughs> I don't know but isn't it amazing all these songs from the 80s that have applicability with the words that they say hmm again I'm not saying that every song is a conducive, uplifting, uh, peace-giving song from the 80s, but um, I do remember that song. We're not going to take it anymore. 
So don't take it. Don't take crap. Don't take being abused, you know. The Lord doesn't want you to do that. Now, there may be a time, like I remember that the Lord had me stay in the toxic relationship for a long time. And, and the lady that I was getting counseled by from uh, Bethel said, you need to leave. God wouldn't have you go through that abuse. And of course, I knew that God didn't want me to go through the abuse, but I also knew that God did want me to go through it for a time. And so there may be a season and a time the Lord would have you go through that. So every situation is different. You know, every situation is different. That's why I say, get a word from the Lord. Let him confirm to you how long that you might need to stay in a toxic relationship. And if you should stay married or not. You know, if you should stay separate. I always say, you know, separate with the goal of deliverance. And then you can be at peace and then try to address it with the person. And if the person, like it says here in... Uh, 2 Timothy 2, 20-26, it says, And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, and humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth and they may come to their senses. So if the person can come to their senses, that's why it's important to separate, to be on safe ground, to be at peace, to do your battling with them instead of right you know, in the same room and have them throwing knives and glasses. You know, that's not fun to receive. And then if they will go through the prayers and mean it. There's some that will go through my prayers and they don't mean it. They mock mock me, which I'm, I'm okay with that, but you know, don't be mocking God. Don't be mocking the Lord through what I'm trying to say and convey. I'm trying to help you guys, you know? And there's so many that are so prideful, so arrogant. It's just like, it, it's sad, you know? I, and I grieve, I grieve for them. You know, they are a victim, even though they victimize the true victims, uh, their spouses and children and so forth. but. They've been victimized by their own moms or dads or step parents and stuff. So, but it's like when I'm sharing the truth, like, don't be mocking it. You know, I get it that you may struggle for a while. You may not want to admit that you're hearing the voices of the enemy, but you are. So, anyways, so to walk in peace 24/7. Let me get a drink here, as we hear a siren in the background. It's 12:12 12, 12 here. Twisted sisters at the song. <laughs> We're not gonna take it anymore. That's funny. I remember them. A little bit hard rockish back in the 80s. So, all right. So, 24/7. Um, how do you walk in it? You know, I, mean, I just think about my own life. You know, again, I've gone through some stuff even here recently that you know caused me to grieve. You know, caused me to cry. And there's a time that's healthy for grief, for crying. You know, for a person that you love, um, that uh, you know didn't, uh, I guess, I, I don't know, a person that you loved. I'll see it that way. And then um, there's a season, there's a time for that. And then if the person that you love or loved is not able to um, be honest or open to uh, go through deliverance, you know, get set free, whatever. There may be a time that you have to simply part and separate and um, give them to the Lord and let the Lord take it from there. And, and you may love them very deeply, very much. You know, it could be a, a wife or a husband, could be a mom or a dad, and that you uh, have to give them to God. And you grieve that. And there's a season for that. But you don't do it forever. You don't say, okay, I'm going to cry for you know, a year, two years, and I go, I know like, like if you lose your mom and dad and, and they uh, were loving to you, which can be a rarity in a lot of people's lives, then you can grieve that. You know, I grieve with my mom and my dad because I love them and they love me unconditionally. And I probably cried for several months with my mom and my dad. Um, but on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, if you are continually going back to the past and dwelling in the past, then that's the spirit of legion that will take you back there to the trauma and have you relive it over and over and over again and, and remembering that. And uh, this uh, Sunday, we're gonna be doing another deliverance session, a worldwide deliverance session, breaking off Legion and Jezebel, Leviathan and Ahab. We're also adding witchcraft now, since uh, I've learned the Lord's given me an anointing over witchcraft. So for people that uh, don't know what witchcraft is, oftentimes it can deal with uh, where you're feeling nauseous in your stomach, but you're not like vomiting. You just feel sick to your stomach a lot because of the word curses that someone's speaking over you. Uh, you may have trouble sleeping. You may get tired during the day. 
those are some of the signs of someone cursing you with witchcraft and it's not cool you know but uh, we'll be breaking that off on Sunday night so so anyway when when um, when the Lord had started teaching me about walking in peace 24 hours a day the biggest thing for me was to pay attention to my thoughts pay attention to my thoughts I had throughout the day if my thoughts ever got into fear into anger into worry into into to um, negativity that's on the enemy's territory and the Lord said stay off the enemy's territory if you're you're partnering with the enemy at that point you're partnering with Satan Satan speaking to you you're listening to it you're agreeing to it and there you go you're not gonna be at peace you're gonna be in fear false evidence appearing real what if what if what if so don't do it take your thoughts captive that's probably the number one thing and again I wrote the book called keep your peace on it's available in uh, Amazon and paperback, Kindle, and Audible. And a lot of people say that that was the best book that I had written. And I'm like, no, nah, I got Restored to Freedom is. Restored to Freedom is very, you know, revelationary and stuff. And, and they're like, yeah, but on a day-to-day -day basis, keep your peace on is what people really need to, to recognize. Because once you go through deliverance, you've taken away the legal right of the enemy to be like in your home or in your head so loudly that you can't have any other thoughts but from the enemy. It's like he's been kicked out of your home once you've gone through deliverance, once you've repented, humbled yourself, taken away the legal right of Leviathan to wrap around your spine and twist and cause you back pain, neck pain, insomnia, all that stuff that Leviathan does, and then get rid of Jezebel, again through forgiveness of those that have hurt you and so forth. Then on a day-to-day -day basis, it's just a matter of maintaining your thoughts that are coming in and recognizing it. So like, as soon as we get done with this teaching today, think about your thoughts proactively. Think about, okay, a thought just came in. Where'd that thought come from? Was it truly you or was it from the enemy? Or was it from the Lord? You know, again, if it's coming from the Lord, it's not gonna be condemning. It's not gonna cause you fear. You know, it could be convicting in love, but it'll always be covered in love. Thoughts from the enemy will feel condemning and fearful and get you angry. You know, that's a pretty easy litmus test for recognizing and discerning that. You know, I think about my thoughts a lot, you know, because I take my thoughts captive if it's going to ever be the enemy. It seems like I rarely hear the enemy anymore, you know. So, anyways. Um, and then, just a matter of guarding yourself from other people that are operating in spirits that come and hurt you. You know, their goal is to speak words out to come against you, to cause you to get taken offense, getting angry. You know, you need to uh, recognize that and stay away from them as much as you can. You know, if I were to be around a bunch of people that have Jezebel or a bunch of people that do witchcraft, well, I'm going to be affected by that. <laughs> you know, if I'm in the same room as them and they're going to be speaking things to try to curse me and lie about me, then what happens is the enemy will replay those thoughts back to you later in the day. Or you start thinking about the thoughts. I remember that when I was uh, married to my second wife, she would say these horrible things that it just felt like Satan himself was speaking out of her mouth. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, during the thought, as the words are coming to me, the thoughts try to replay like instantly and say, yeah, yeah, you know, you are a piece of blank and blah, blah, blah. And you can't make good decisions and blah, blah, blah. And you're just like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You start to buy into that and you want to agree with it. And you're like, wait a minute. No, that's not right. That's wrong. And so the best thing you can do is to get out of Dodge and get away. You know, I know some cases like it was hard for me. Sometimes my spouse would chase me from room to room. Sometimes I'd try to get out and, and like get in my car and back up in, in the garage and she would stand behind my car so I couldn't get out. And I'm like, really? I'm like, what is wrong with you? Once she grabbed my arms and she actually scarred one of them with her fingernails. And I'm like, seriously, it's like, this is so nuts. So anyway, the best thing you can do is to try to stay away from people that operate in in uh, words of condemnation and, and, and negativity and all that stuff. Stay away from them. Just say no. Say, hey, I gotta go. Love ya, but you know, we'll talk later. You know, and call them back in like a week. You know, talk as minimally as possible with people, especially in your inner circle of friends. You know, choose a different inner circle if your inner circle of friends is bringing you down. Don't bring me down. Bruce, remember that? That's another song from the 80s. Oh my gosh, 
all these songs are applicable for spiritual warfare. Who'd, who'd have known? There's a lot of people outside walking on the sidewalks today here. It's a wonderful day. Remember that song, Don't Bring Me Down, Bruce? Anyways. Like a bridge over troubled water. There's a bridge up here, actually. I'm talking about bridges right now. Alrighty, so, um, so anyways, peace. We like to walk in peace. Who doesn't like that? In fact, I've ministered to people who are multi, multi-millionaires and celebrities and Hollywood people and actors and actresses that don't have peace. They could have all the money in the world, but without peace, it is worthless. You know, people commit suicide because of why? Demons speaking to them in their thoughts, causing them to buy into the thought, saying, you'd be better off dead. Nobody loves you, blah, 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 blah. And that's why people commit suicide. You know, it's not a chemical imbalance. You know, they may have that once they have taken their lives or whatever, they've had these thoughts of, of killing themselves, but it all goes back to demonic voices they're hearing. Hello, get rid of Legion, get rid of Jezebel, Leviathan, get rid of those thoughts. You know, once your soul wounds are healed, your souls are your mind, will, and emotions. Take every thought captive. That's how it works. And then you'll be fun to be around. People actually want to hang out with you. You know, people want to reach out to you because what you've got, they want. They want that peace. So, anyways, um, um, got some exciting news. Again, Sunday night, December 30th, worldwide deliverance session. Jezebel, Leviathan, Ahab, and Legion, and breaking off witchcraft curses. Um, Monday, surprise, I'm going to interview the greatest family in America. Dun, 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 dun. Finally, after all these months of talking about them, they're going to come on camera, the entire family. I'll see if I can provoke them to anger. <laughs> no, that's the old, that's, the, that's what Jezebel would do. <laughs> but you'll be able to meet the littles, the littles. We'll be able to talk about going on trips to Africa and uh, China and beyond. So um, it's gonna be awesome. So you wanna make sure Monday you guys watch The Greatest Family in America. They're gonna share why and what and how they have uh, operate day to day. You know, I've been there, I've lived with them. You know, I see firsthand. You know, if a person does something, you know, that's not good, they address it in love. They don't yell and scream and throw things, you know. It's a really, really great uh, testimony. You know, they they had some struggles when they were first uh, married and had children, and they're going to share that stuff. But they have such great um, uh, teaching moments and correcting moments when a child needs corrected. It's it's amazing to watch. But that's Monday, December thirty first, New Year's Eve, eleven thirty a.m. The greatest family in America. It's going to be awesome. Again, the deliverance session Sunday night. Deliverance sessions Sunday night, and um, that will be uh, at 9 p.m. Eastern. So, alrighty. So, any, anybody want a word from the Lord? I know that there's uh, somebody on here that did, that I promised that I would give. Um, that's from South Africa. Let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. In fact, I saw them on here. I saw him on here earlier. So let me see. Make your presence known, and I will give you a word. There, I think that's you. Tynus, Tynus Stridum. I think that's how you say your name. So Tynus, I'm going to give you a word. And uh, here we go. All right, the Lord's just showing me that you have been through some tumultuous attacks from the enemy, some extreme stuff, not pleasant, still going through attacks that uh, have worn you down, worn you out, caused you to, at times, want to think, you know, is it worth going on, you know, day by day. It's just, uh, it's been a very, very uh, huge struggle um, as the enemy has come against you a lot, a lot. And the Lord said, 
I've seen it all, my son, I've seen it all. And I appreciate everything that you've endured because it has been so extreme. But you see, my son, those that have gone through the most extreme sacrifices, the most extreme pains in their lives will, when healed, come into the strongest anointings, the most extreme anointings. Those that have gone through extreme, 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 extreme pain, abuse, come into the most extreme, extreme, extreme anointings. And that will be what I do for you, my son. For you have fought the valiant fight. You have not given up, although the enemy has tried to get you to give up many, many, many times. But you have persevered through that, and that your heart has been strengthened, even though it's been beaten on, and you felt like you've bled like pounds of uh, blood out of you. But I'm using all of that to take you into a ministry that you'll be able to share your testimony and that I'll put you on stage for many, many, many thousands and thousands to hear. And it will be worth it all. For I love you, my son, for there's been a great disparity between those in South Africa, those that are wealthy, those that are poor, such pride, such arrogance, and those that have money versus those that have not. So continue to climb up the mountain. Continue as I strengthen you. For there will come a time of transition in your life. For I can trust you. I love you greatly. For yes, you have endured much. Much that you have suffered, but much you will be given. And much I will entrust in you. Love the Lord. Wow. Well, that was pretty cool. All righty. Let's see. Nicole Ramirez. Okay, I'll give you a word. Okay, the Lord says, My daughter, the peace that I'm going to bring to you will feel like a soft blanket that will warm you, warm your heart in a great way. And allow you to bring peace into the other's lives when the healing is completed within you because of the extremity of the attacks of the enemy in your life from so many, so many people that you should have been protected by, but yet they were the ones that attacked you. When the healing is completed, the level of peace that you walk in will be so great and so good that when you walk into a room, people will feel that peace. All the anxiety and the fear will be gone and people won't even recognize you. So as you walk closer to me and as the blanket comes around you, the longer you continue to walk closer to me, hear my voice, discern the thoughts of the enemy, feel my presence upon you, then the stronger the level of peace will become. It will increase. It'll be like an increasing peace level. In 2019, you will see that in your life. 
you will feel the presence of the Lord so strong by the end of 2019. And I kind of see like there's like a little girl inside of you that has been wanting to be recognized, to be valued, because so many people have not valued you. And the Lord said, I will value you, I will validate you, and I will promote you. Huh, this is interesting. I see a vision of Horton Hears a Who, and uh, I know in that, uh, there's a movie that they made about that, where the Who was so small, so hard to see, like insignificant. And the Lord's saying that you have felt like a who in your life, but get ready for you are going to be recognized. You will be recognized. So be patient, he says, be patient, and it will come about. You'll see the transition in 2019. And by the end of 2019, you will be given <clears throat> more platforms for you to uh, be recognized on. And again, be patient. Be patient is the big thing. Be patient and, be, and stay humble. Be patient and humble. You know, that's what the Lord told me you know, before I came into the, doing the ministry thingy back in, uh, I guess, 2015. You know, as I was going through a lot of stuff, the Lord said, be humble, be patient, be pure, be godly. You got to make sure that you stay in that realm, Nelson, because if you don't, he said the enemy will have the right to come against you. So anyway, all right, let me see what time it is. Cause I'm starting to get hungry. Who knows? Maybe I'll have some uh, brisket today, 1230. So it's been an hour. I can give maybe, I don't know, two more words. Okay, Suzanne Gonzalez, I'll give you a word. Here we go. Make sure this is still on. It's a beautiful day here, by the way. Okay, here we go. Okay, this is Suzanne Gonzalez. Lord says, I love your zeal. It is refreshing. You are zealous for me, the Lord. And I will be zealous for you. You've done a lot of ministry behind the scenes for a long time. And I've seen it all. I love your humble heart, your giving heart. It is as it should be. The purity, the spotlessness. You are one of my remnant, my love. You don't crave the spotlight. You don't crave the recognition. But I do recognize you. I do recognize your heart, for it is pure, it is beautiful, it is precious to me. Those that walk in humility are so rare, which you do. You're willing to give up anything and everything to further bringing more souls into the kingdom, which is what it's all about. And I will provide an increase financially for your needs, for your desires, for your wants, for you are such a giving person. There will be several suddenlies in 2019 Nothing that you need to do to receive, but continue to do what you're doing, for I love you greatly. I'll also love your husband. Your husband has a similar heart that you do. You together make an amazing tandem, and it's so rare because so many in their marriages hate each other 
example, the enemy pits one against the other, but not in your case. In your case, you love each other like Christ loved the church. And I'm proud of both you and your husband. And I will bless you for I can trust you. For your lives have both been about others and about others' souls. You are the remnant, my love, Suzanne. And it's time because you are in the right position that you need to be in. So get ready for the sudden lease. For the sudden lease will overwhelm you and the tears of pain from the past will be tears of joy for the future. Love the Lord. Wow, well that was a cool word. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So Suzanne, I don't know if that resonates or not. If you wanna write a message, assuming I think you're still on there. So thank you, Lord. All right. Um, Suzanne, Suzanne, did it resonate? Did it resonate? Let me see, let me see. Thank you. Yes. All right. Praise the Lord. All righty. I'm going to get a word for, I just saw on here, Jennifer, Jennifer Mullinax. Okay, the Lord says, My love, your heart, so pure, so in line with my heart, your desire to help so many people who have been hurt so deeply, walking in your humbleness of heart so precious so willing to give of yourself and everything that you own to others so selfless and yes I've seen everything that you have endured and that you are still enduring for your calling is great and what you've endured has been even greater the amount that the enemy has come against for so long to hold you back to keep you in the past to discourage you but you have broken freed from the enemy's clutches and there's many lives that you have touched but many many thousands more that you will touch and it will all be worth it in the end as the end of the pain from the past is here and the transition into your future in 2019 is upon you. Nothing you need to figure out. It will become apparent to you in more ways than one. For my love is so deep for you because your love is so deep for my children. For you get it, you understand it, you know their pain. You know there's also pain in the purpose and the purpose of the pain is to ultimately come out of the past pains to walk in the full authority of Christ and to pay it back in two, two ways, 
pay it back to the enemy for what he has done to you, but also pay it back for the pain that you've endured in loving on those that I have brought to you and will bring to you. I will give you the desires of your heart, for I know what they are. And you'll have much laughter and joy in the year 2019 like you've never had before. Love the Lord. All righty. Oh, that was a good word. Yay, God. So let me know if that resonates with you, Jennifer. Let's see, it's 1240. There's a lot of people walking on the sidewalks today. beautiful day in the neighborhood and hopefully you guys heard all this I don't think the wind was a factor even though it's blowing all over me I always have to find trees so yes it does yay praise the Lord all righty um, I think that's going to be all for today I'm kind of hungry um, again I like doing these uh, prophetic words or words from the Lord whatever you want to call them because uh, the Lord never let me do these up until last uh, Wednesday. So I love doing that. It's what my guy that mentored me would do all the time. He'd give me a word from the Lord when we started a session. So it's cool. I may do like an entire day of that. Not, no, not an entire day. Uh, I may do an entire teaching on maybe that. Maybe tomorrow. You know, maybe I can give like a whole hour and a half's worth or two hours worth of words. I mean, that's you know my heart i love to do that and uh i don't want to ever give a word that's not right looks like it's being spot on by some of you guys so that's good so yay i love doing that you know because i remember i couldn't do that back in 2008 you know i could just pray in tongues i'm like what good is that i don't know what i'm saying so i was just like i wanted that gift and the lord like you know gave that you know so anyways and um anyway i will let you guys go love you guys keep your peace on and again, um, uh, Sunday nights, the Worldwide Deliverance Session, 9 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Central, 7 o'clock Mountain, 6 o'clock Pacific, expecting over a thousand plus people on their live all over the world. And then uh, Monday, December 31st, interviewing the greatest family in America. It's amazing. Their, their story, their testimony, I've observed it firsthand. I've lived with them. I know how they, uh, you know, when, when the children need to be corrected, how they're done in love, how the children confront each other when they need to confront. I mean, it's just a beautiful way of, uh, I wish I would have uh, learned from them before I started my family. But uh, most of us, unfortunately, don't take uh, classes on that in college or in high school or in church. They need to teach this stuff. So, all right. Love you guys. See ya. Bye-bye.